Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about vitamin D and the prevention of autoimmune disease. There's a great study out of Boston uh, with researchers from Harvard and Brigham and Women's. So they did a very good study on a, a basically a double-blind placebo study, and they had a large number of participants, and the follow-through was pretty good over the five years. So let's go ahead and discuss uh, what the study said. There was 25,871 participants over a five-year period, and it was a double-blind placebo study. 12,786 men greater than or equal to the age of 50 were the participants, and then 13,085 women greater than or equal to 55 years old. Now, the participants were selected from the United States, and one of the requirements was that they were not uh, taking in more than 800 milligrams of vitamin D in food sources or supplementation. And the other requirement was that they forego fish oil supplementation. Okay, so they were not on fish oil, and they were only taking 800 milligrams of vitamin D, if any, uh, or lower. Now, they split the group into four different groups. One is omega-3, a placebo, and a vitamin D placebo. So they were getting two pills with just placebos. Then you had an active group for omega-3 and an active vitamin D group. So basically they took omega-3 and vitamin D together in that group. Another group had omega-3 placebo and a vitamin D active form. And the other group had omega-3 active and a vitamin D placebo. So they were able to determine whether vitamin D and omega made an impact, or just omega, or just vitamin D, or placebo, and look at it, look at it and compare all four subsets. Now, if we just get right to it and look at the conclusion, okay, the conclusion of vitamin D supplementation with or without omega-3s for five years reduced autoimmune disease by 22%, okay? And then omega-3 supplementation with or without vitamin D reduced autoimmune disease by 15% which actually they don't consider statistically significant, but 22% is. Now, why does vitamin D impact autoimmune disease? Because there are cells, immune cells, that have rich receptors for vitamin D or the active forms of vitamin D. So vitamin D receptors are found in high density in dendritic cells, basically nerves, and then T and B cells, uh, lymph T and B lymphocyte cells, and macrophages. So when you look at it, they have high levels of receptors for the active form of vitamin D. And vitamin D, or 125-dihydroxyvitamin D, will impact the um, immune system, right? So I like to explain it as like what we call Th1 and Th2, right? Th1, and this is a very simplistic model. Th1 is when you have like an active infection, virus, bacteria, whatever it is, you have an immune response. Th2 is like the humoral response, uh, basically the memory of the infection. So they need to be in balance, okay? And there is another section where it's called T regulatory cells, and these are the referees of the two systems, trying to keep everything in balance. and Vitamin D really impacts the T regulatory cells that keeps the Th1 and Th2 systems in balance, okay? So, interesting thing. They use colcalciferol, which is vitamin D3, at 200 IUs per day, okay? And the placebo was soybean oil. So they made a capsule with vitamin D and another one with soybean as a placebo for some patients. And this product was produced by Pharmavite, which makes nature-made uh, supplements or vitamins, okay? The, the reason I say that's interesting is because oftentimes when you go to your doctor and you're low on vitamin D, they uh, supplement with D2, not D3, right? So in this study, they actually used D3, and they only used 
2,000 units. The Marine Omega-3, which they used, they used 1,000 milligrams of basically omega-3s, and of the omega-3s, EPA was 460 and DHA was 380. So the EPA DHA portion was actually less than the total amount, um, but this is really what's going to impact the autoimmune process. The placebo for that was olive oil. So the fish oil was produced or provided by Pronova Biopharma. They make Lavaza. A Lavaza is a prescription fish oil. It's a ethyl ester form. So basically it's been changed so it can be patented and utilized as a pharmaceutical. The more natural form would be the triglyceride forms. Now you can argue that um, Lavaza is more purified and it has more quality control, but it's also more expensive. The triglyceride forms you can get from, you know, over the counter and so forth. And there are some issues with that in terms of being rancid and not having the quality uh, or quality control that a pharmaceutical uh, grade would have. However, you can find companies that have high quality fish oil uh, that is not rancid. So, it's an ethyl ester form. So, even using these, you can see that it has an impact on the autoimmune process or or the prevalence of showing up later on. Now, I like to talk about, outside the study, how can we improve this even further, right? They've only used 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 to make an impact on autoimmune disease, which is 22%, right? Um, an improvement of 22%. What if they used higher doses and actually monitored um, vitamin D levels to try to get into its optimal levels. My optimal level is between 60 and 80. They did do a follow-up, a one-year follow-up, where they were giving the patients 2,000 units, and they did see an increase of somewhere around the upper 20s to around the 40 range over a year period. But what if you used higher doses and got that range up to 60 and 80? Okay. Would that impact the outcome? Also, instead of using the ethyl ester form of the fish oil, what if they used the triglyceride form, which is the more natural form, right? It's not a pharmaceutical uh, changed uh, component. So what if they used a triglyceride form to impact that? Uh, would the outcome be better? And I don't know. What if they also used a younger population? Because in clinical practice, we often see autoimmune disease in, in younger and younger patients. And to prevent autoimmune disease, if you start it earlier on, you can have a bigger impact. So if they also had a younger population, not over 50, uh, and did a follow-up study on that, would it make a bigger difference in terms of the outcome? Also, there are other nutrients that impact the T regulatory cells. So vitamin D is very important, ideal level 60 to 80 nanograms. And uh, fish oil, I think, is important for that also. And the other component would be glutathione, or NAC, or NAC, right? Liposomal glutathione would be great, or NAC would also impact T regulatory cells and probably increase the out, uh, better outcome for this study. So if they did a study and they really looked at all the nutrients that would impact the T regulatory cell or the immune cells in a positive way and used a combination of those, would the outcome be better? Uh, my guess would be yes, because we do it all the time in the office. We have patients who come in with autoimmune disease and we can put them into remission over time, uh, which is great. Um, or even thinking about prevention, right? prevention of autoimmune disease. So mom and dad has an autoimmune disease and we have the child come in. Can we prevent them from getting autoimmune disease? It's not just about supplementation, obviously. You have to be able to reduce stress and all the different triggers of autoimmune autoimmunity, autoimmune disease. Um, you have to also look at hormonal fluctuations. You have to look at food 
because food has such a big impact on autoimmune disease, especially gluten and dairy. So uh, it, this was a great study because it's, it's just kind of touching the surfaces of vitamin D impacting uh, autoimmune disease. But if you combine all the things that we know that can help, I think the outcome can be even better. But it's just about uh, compliance with patients and getting patients to do all these things that you want them to do, especially a large number of patients like this. Um, but this was a great study, all right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.